Welcome into Slug Dog's channel. Hey, it's me, Slug Dog, and now that some time has passed, I can finally let you guys all in on the season 14 Yorick technology. He's pretty meh. In all seriousness, Yorick's in a pretty weird spot. Yorick has always been a very hit or miss champion. Now somehow they made him even more hit or miss. The new item changes made it so that if you don't win lane, you're probably useless for the rest of the game. But if you do win lane and you somehow snowball super hard, you're a mega 1v9 titan that can one shot everything that gets in his way. If I had to say, he's worse than last season because he's a lot more inconsistent and it doesn't really fix his issues and instead just pushes him into a shittier spot when it comes to balance. Now, there's a lot of changes so let's just get into it. Before we get to the main meet, let's talk about the new objectives, the Void Grubs, the Changed Herald. Void Grubs are a pretty decent objective, um, the people are hopping up to be super good, but they're just okay. It's good on champions that don't still push too fast, but with someone like Yarek who pushes like a madman, it doesn't add on that much damage. It's good for early players, don't get me wrong, but let's say you did like 3000 damage to the first tower, it's only gonna add a few hundred over the course of that time. The second change of Herald is actually really nice though. Herald is stronger than ever before, so now you can go inside of it and control the charge. Wow, that's so cool. There's a lot of things you can do as well, but there are two main things that make new Herald better than the old one. One, you can make it charge faster than now. New Herald allows you to click on it pretty much instantly after you place it, which skips the animation of revving up its charge. The second thing also which makes it better is the iron on its back doesn't chunk out half of Herald's HP instead, but it's instead a percentage of its health. Pretty good, makes it a bit tankier. All these changes topside though come at a big cost. And that's that top lane is no longer an island but a fucking holiday resort. Almost every game I play in, everybody comes top lane like Epstein's Island and it's terrible, it's terrible for my aggressive Yorick playstyle. If you run TP Ignite as well, yeah no, you're gonna get ganked 24-7, it's gonna be terrible. So I recommend TP Flash every game from now on. You don't ever have any alone time with the enemy top nowadays, and it's a nightmare having to deal with all the ganks and pressure. Now we get into the meaty part of the bone, atomization. It's gonna be a long yapping section, so be sure to strap in your boots and shirts and sit tight, cause we're going to 3000 word essay. No seriously, this is 3000 words. I'm gonna answer the most common questions I predict and move on to more specifics as I talk further and further. And the one I receive the most is, What's the build for Yarek? And I can safely say that this is my favorite build right now. Serrated so Dirk, Profane Hydra, Lucidity Boots, Opportunity, Grudge, Edge of Night, and Guiding Angel. Let's start with the first one, Serrated Dirk. Serrated Dirk is just broken as hell this season. It buffed the Fallity gigantic. In previous seasons, the Fallity only gave, I believe, 0.6 base armor pen. So if the enemy had one armor, you'd only be reducing 0.6. But as you level up, you get that 0.4. So at level 18, it'll reduce it by one armor straight up. But now, Lethality straight up reduces armor one to one ratio no matter what level you are. So every Lethality you have is one armor reduced, whether you level one or level 18. Another thing that's really good, Serrated Dirk went down in price. So now it's the same thing as last season, except it's cheaper and it's stronger. So you should be going at every game. Moving on to the next item, Profane Hydra, one of the new additions to League of Legoland. It's like Lethality Tiamat, and holy hell, it's perfect on Yarek. It gives him insane wave clear, insane Lethality damage, and to top it off, it basically gives you a new ability. So many times I found myself maybe missing a bit of damage or struggling melee range with Lethality Yarek. That's always been an issue. You're strong off ghouls and poking, but when you're up front next to the enemy, you're not as good as Bruiser Yarek. Profane Hydra fixes that hugely, giving you a huge damaging AoE effect that's pretty much undodgeable. And now, you have access to new combos. All in all, definitely one of Yarek's best items, and it's not even close to be honest. And it's getting buffed! Look! Patch 14.1 bits coming out tomorrow or something. Oh my god, it's getting buffed! God damn! Lucidity Boots is definitely a more interesting one. Ability Ace is a lot harder to get nowadays, so that's why Lucidity is really important. Yes, it has five less haste, but reducing that downtime between each E is really, really important. In terms of every other Boots itemization though, it's pretty much the same. Lucidity is good if you go going Lethality, Steel Caps against Heavy AD, Mercury Treads against CC or AP, Swifties if you got Balls of Steel. Now, the second new item to be implemented in League of Legends is Opportunity. 
Opportunity is very similar to last season's Yamas, where if you're chilling out of combat, you get extra lethality. And when you first hit someone, you keep that lethality for a few seconds. Except now, Opportunity is a lot better because last season of Yamas, you need to walk around for 30 years to stack it up, and it was just way too bad on Yarrick. But Assassin's great, Yarrick kind of meh. But Opportunity is great because you just need to be 8 seconds out of combat, and it can give up to 28 lethality. 28 lethality? 28 lethality! Come on! Pretty cheap as well, it's a good item, good stats. Now, Cerdo's Grudge is still one of the most powerful items for Yarrick, but instead of it giving you a shitload of armor pen, it gives you a shitload of armor pen and lethality this season. Yes, we now have percent armor pen and lethality combined into one item. It's amazing. Honestly, I would recommend going Grudge second item, and that's perfectly fine with this build. Now, this sounds too good to be true, right? And yeah, it is. There is one massive downside. Grudge no longer slows anymore. Ah, well, it doesn't slow. It still slows every now and then, but only works when they're below 50%. Which, to be fair, isn't the worst, but nowhere comparable to old Grudge, which just consistently slowed 100% of the time. So now Grudge goes from one of the most powerful damaging items you can go in Yark to even more powerful damaging item at the sacrifice of a consistent slow. We will remember you, old Grudge, and we're welcoming you to new Grudge. Now get on my bed, baby girl. Edge of Night is an amazing item of the Fallow Yark setup, gives you a bit of extra tankiness for the health, but the spell shield as well is really useful, and it builds off Serrated Dick, which is the best item ever. For some reason as well, um, Edge of Night used to only give you 12 lethality, but this one, 15! That's pretty damn good! Only 3 less compared to normal lethality items. One of the more underrated and powerful items in Yark, now that the Fallow has been hugely buffed though, I think it's actually going to be one of the best. A lot of bruisey items in Yark are nerfed and changed, so this is a great pickup if you want damage and tankiness, and it's going just going to be, you know, that's a special mate. Other item is incredibly flexible, GA, another revive, why don't you want that? One thing to keep track of though is, even though I said the last item is flexible, if you go like 5 lethality items, which is pretty much this build, it's very likely you're overstacking lethality, because at a certain point, once you get 3 or 4 lethality items, the enemy is going to have 0 armor anyways, right, unless they're going tank. And if you got an extra lethality item, it wouldn't really change much. Instead, I recommend going a healthier or tanky item, so just so that you don't get one shot. This is the classic lethality build of the season. This just kills people. The main problem with this build is that it has zero survivability, pretty much. You no longer have that Hullbreaker to super beef you up, and there's not really any items in the league which is similar to old Hullbreaker. It's a high risk, high reward build, but you kill super fast. And also you die super fast, so keep that in mind. Now moving on to the Bruiser build that I think is great. Titanic Hydra, Steel Caps, Shoujin, Sundered Sky, Cleaver, and Sterax. Titanic Hydra is fantastic in a new season. Gives a ton of health and AD, but most importantly, it gives you a consistent auto attack resetter and insane wave clear. You can just auto Titanic and it one shots the backline and then melee means a left and like 3 HP. It's pretty funny how big of a turn this item got, it went from last season being absolute horseshit on bruises, and now it's this behemoth titan item that everybody goes. To be honest, it kind of deserves it, it's been pretty shit for 3 years, only going like Mundo and Sion. Now everybody can go it. Shoujin's one of Yark's best items in the new season, it received a giant rewrap. Previous Shoujin, bit of moon speed, bit of bilious, and it was pretty nice, but it was just a niche item, right? Now, new Shoujin gives Ability Haste, which is a stat that's really hard to get, Ability Damage, which also affects Ghouls, so now Shoujin gives you Ability Haste and gives you Damage. The way it works in Yarrick is every time you Q or E an enemy unit at, or Jungle Camps, Minions, Champions, you gain stacks. You gain one stack from every Q and one stack for each unit you hit with E, meaning you can stack it up from 0 to 4 stacks if you hit 4 enemy minions with just your E. The thing is as well is that the stacks last a really long time, so it's just super consistent to hold 4 stacks for that 12% increased ghoul damage. Now I've been saying ghoul damage, but it also affects your Q, E, Maiden, everything. You might be thinking, 12% isn't that much, but the main point of Shoujin in the first place wasn't for that, you built it for the ability haste, and now the ability haste is not easy to get, this combination of ability haste and big goo damage is fantastic. Well, Slog Dog, it's so good. Why don't you go on your Lethality Yark build? And now that you say that, 
Yeah, I probably should actually. Hey, fuck the build from earlier. Screw going opportunity. Gojo, go show you like third or fourth item or something. There's a new build now. There we go. So this guy's a pretty damn underrated item. It's basically Old Sundar, except it has a six second cooldown, which kind of ruins the point of Old Sundar because you abuse the 1.5 second CD. So uh, kind of just shit Sundar, but uh, it, it's a good item. Okay, trust me, it's a good item. It's really good, especially in skirmish and team fight scenarios, because you can proc on everyone and get a bunch of HP, nice and simple. It also does pretty decent damage, and if you combine the healing you get from the item with Q, Conqueror healing, it can stack up real quick. You can solve this as a Triforce, but honestly, I have a huge hatred for Triforce run. And you know what? I'm gonna fucking complain about Triforce. I'm gonna go on a rant. This item is absolute trash. I don't even know why they I don't even know why it's the way it is. I want to be honest, I don't know why. Let's just compare Triforce from last season to current right now. First of all, no longer stacking bonus base AD, which is minus 18% base AD increased damage, which is like, think about it, you lose, unironically, 20% of Triforce damage now, maybe even more. The build path is horse shit, what the fuck is this? Sheen is $1,000, which doesn't seem that bad, Except it's really bad because you delay Sheen by 300 gold more compared to last season. Imagine you spend a 300 gold for like a cloth armor or a longsword or dagger, whatever. Okay, okay, who cares about that though? Now hold the door, I'm gonna hold the door for a second. Right now, you can buy Sheen for a thousand bucks for a bonus like, well, 40 damage on your abilities early game. Or you go Serrated Dirk and just fucking hit 40 damage extra with every auto attack. Yeah. Seriously. Third reason I hate it. Phage and Halfbound Axe are just horribly standard. I don't know who designed this. Halfbound Axe. Components, terrible. They don't give you anything from upgrading it. Literally does nothing. Last season, gave you a movement speed. But they moved that onto Phage. But Phage isn't that bad. It's the least worst component out of all of these. But here's the problem. If I'm describing any component for an item as the least worst, you can bet your eyes is a shit item. Now to top it off, to top off why I hate Triforce right now, it's the exact same price as last season's Triforce. So you're spending the same amount of money for just a dog shit version of the product you liked last year. Think about it. Imagine you're getting meth from the good old Walter Wright, 97% pure, goddamn blue. And then you get meth from me, Slug Dog, who mixes dog shit with his 30% pure meth. Mega downgrade, and that's why I don't like getting meth from shitty dealers. To prove it to you further, here's a fight with me in a rally where I just lose where I have item advantage, and it's a pretty good fight for me, and uh, yeah, it's not even close because Triforce is dog shit. Uh, anyways, go Triforce if you want to instead of Sun and Sky. <coughs> Back to the same as last season, except it gives you less ability haste and less armor pen, and apparently less balls because. They're a coward for going Brizzle Yard. Go the Fowler, you fucking coward. Sterex. Sterex. Now, there are some other builds I have as well. You can mix match them, and who knows, maybe some of these you might enjoy in the builds I recommended. Go for it. I, I, it's the new season. Try shit out, you know. Experimentation's perfect time right now. But, there are some items that I haven't talked about that I do want to talk about that aren't bad at all. But I'm not sure how you can integrate into Yark's builds, whether it be for reasons that they're just no good timing to buy it, or just a lack of experience because I haven't tested them enough. But these are items I think that have big potential and can be really good on Yark, provided I get more time to try them out. Now the first item is Hullbreaker. Yes, I know, when I first saw Hullbreaker, I said, this is dog shit, unbuildable item. But I tried a few games of it and it's actually surprisingly decent. The new hole break is definitely worse than the old one, don't get me wrong. Replace the armor and Mar, you get with a 5 hit passive? What the hell? 5 hits? And the most it does is a bit of extra damage similar to a Triforce proc to champions. And yeah, it's a big damage to towers, but 5 hits? That's way too much, you're never gonna hit that many times, right? But I didn't realize this. The good news about this 5 hit passive is the auto stack on minions, but don't proc on minions. That means you can pre-stack on minions and hit a champion or structure in the next 10 seconds and get a really big demolish proc or hit a champion for a good trade. Did I mention that? You can hold the stacks for like 10 seconds. Is it 10 seconds? I don't know. I'm not good at keeping track of time, but you can hold it for a long time, okay? So one strategy that I had in mind, you can clear away wave like usual. And by the time you finish it, you will have Hullbreaker fully stacked in which you can just quickly hit the tower 
or enemy to get some damage or poke in. Daktro is another really solid tank item as well that can be potentially good of a bruiser build. It's a giant bundle of armor and MR. The problem with Jagtro is that it's the most expensive tank item in the game and it takes time to stack it up to get that big armor and MR payoff. Also, you could be replacing it with another bruiser item and Jagtro gives nothing but tank stats. So yeah, it could be pretty good if you want to be beefed up. But you, you consider how stuff like Sun of Sky gives healing, Starus gives a big shield. It's hard to think of a way to slot it in. Dry Beg has a lot of potential too. I think it's an amazing item that it could do good into champs like Trindamy and Jax who jump on you once and when they jump on you, you can just proc Shardbreaker and kite them easy peasy. But I permaban Jax and I haven't versed any trends in a new season, so uh, yeah. But do keep an eye out for Shardbreaker. I think there's a lot of potential interesting stuff you can do with it. So if you see me doing some weird crack builds of later on, check it out, baby. Eclipse is a pretty good item on Yorick. It's a very, very solid item to slot in any Yorick build now. It's just a really good effect of big damage, a good lethality, and strong bruiser effect for a bruiser build. Nothing is an item, but let's say you go bruiser Yorick. You want health because it synergizes stuff like Starx and Titanic, none of which Eclipse gives. And if you go lethality, it delays your lethality item, so it messes up with main builds. But at the same time, it's just a really safe, consistent, good item. I think it has huge potential, especially in the lethality build though, just because if you have a lot of armor pen, you can do 8% max health damage and get a shield out of it. It also pairs perfectly Profane Hydra, where you can consistently Q Profane and get the shield as well as the damage. I can see it being in one of my main builds at one point, but we're in a very experimentative period, so yeah! Other items are really just solid right now and very, very good. Horizon High is just really good into AD champions. It got buffed huge. 2.3k gold! What the fuck? It's in 2.3k gold for 20% attack speed reduction and like 70 armor and the armor. Come on, that's just broken, right? Koenig Rukun, new MR item. Very, very good. 20% HP MR shield. It's like a Galio W for free. Also, it gives 80 MR, ridiculous amount. But I will say, I still recommend going more because you have the AD in more and it's still a very big shield. A lot more useful. And I know just because some of you guys are thinking about it, I can just tell. I know, I can read you guys like a book. No, I'm not going to stop you from going heart still. But like, you know, think of your brain. What else? Oh yeah, Leandri's Torment's a great item too. Leandri's gets a bit of extra AP damage and can be really useful. What, do you think I'm fucking stupid? You think I'm gonna suggest an AP Yark item? What are you? You, th you think you, you think you think I'm gonna do that? Are you even a real fan? Do you understand how much I hate AP Yark? You dumb motherfucker! Nothing changed about the runes. No, seriously, nothing changed. Just go same runes. Yeah, there's a new rune thing with the time bob tonic and whatever in the fucking inspiration tree, but it's not good in Yark, so don't bother. Oh, I guess there is one thing that's changed recently. I've been going presence of mind. Is my conquest set up with it? Um, I just want presence of mind stuff triumph. Uh, it makes it so that I basically never run out of mana. It's actually pretty useful. Uh, what else? First strike's good of lethality. Don't think I need to mention that. Uh, I don't really go combat anymore, so... If you still want to go, though, I don't, I don't think it's bad at all. It's definitely not bad. I just think of Conqueror for consistency, so... I suggest that. I say for runes and items, honestly, that's most of the stuff that I want to specifically talk about in Yark. But just a refresher, you know, in case anybody's getting to Yark, I explain the general playstyle. And playstyle changes that come in Season 14. Uh, by the way, nothing changed about Bruiser Yark, so, um, yeah, it's just pretty much smash your head into a wall until it works. But the Valley Yark though, it's pretty different. Now that you're a lot squishier, if you don't hit your E's, you could just die. So don't, don't miss your E's, really important. I recommend getting Shojin very early on as well. Get that E up time, get used to the feeling of Yark in season 14. But also get used to the fact that because we have a lot more damage, going for picks and squishies is very, very good now. Go around, look for kills, Play around like an assassin, you know? To play Lethality Yark, you gotta be a murderer. You gotta be evasive. Look for vision blind spots. Go for cheeky kills. And be a bigger scumbag than you've ever been before. Also, in case you forget, I have to emphasize, top lane's a fucking hellhole now. It's chaos. Everyone loves ganking and fighting there, so remember to be safe and don't die. Quick little note, I gotta really, really, really emphasize this. The main difference between Season 13 and Season 14 Yarrick is your tankiness. Even if you're going Bruiser, even if you're going Lethality, you are a lot squishier. Not having Hullbreaker is negative 60 armor and MR at all stages of the game. So if I have to give you any one tip and why you might be like, oh Yarrick's so shit, I feel it feels horrible. It's probably because you're not positioning well, you're dying getting caught off. 
if you can fix that, that that's literally what was my issue as well by the way at the start of the season i fixed that and it made playing yarek was so much better so i will give that little tip for everyone if you're struggling with yarek um don't suck and be careful out there and have a great time and remember kids may be a tough time right now for us but we do what we do best persist walk through the flames a wise man once told me them boys await you in challenger now go Climb rank Sagachu and become the best player you've ever seen and the hottest fanboy you've ever seen as well. And remember, fanboys are ready for you challenger. You got this, and I will help you guys all achieve your goals. Mm -hmm.